Federal investigators have raided Rudy Giuliani's New York City home and office. They seized electronics belonging to the former mayor yesterday as part of its probe into his business dealings with Ukraine. In 2019, Giuliani was heavily involved in the effort to pressure the Eastern European country to open an investigation into then-presidential candidate Joe Biden, which helped trigger Mr. Trump's first impeachment. Uh, he was, he rather has denied any wrongdoing, Giuliani has. A year before that, Michael Cohen's office and residences were raided in connection to the investigation into the Trump campaign's ties to Russia. So joining me now to discuss this is White House, a rather white-collar defense attorney, Ross Garber. You are not a White House attorney, but you are a white-collar defense attorney. So thanks for joining us. Exactly um, right. This yeah. seems pretty extraordinary to me, um, to have a federal search warrant executed against a lawyer, especially one that is the former lawyer of a former president. I don't know if he's his current lawyer. Um, how extraordinary is this? Yeah, it, it is very, very unusual. It's, it's unusual to have this kind of case. It's unusual to have this kind of case against a lawyer uh, or involving a lawyer. It's unusual to have a case involving a lawyer for a former president. And also the execution of a search warrant in this kind of situation is unusual. Usually what would happen is uh, a grand jury subpoena would be issued. The lawyer would be asked to produce documents. He'd produce documents through his lawyer. Instead, what happened in this case was uh, the execution of a search warrant. Agents showed up at the crack of dawn at the uh, at Mr. Giuliani's office and home. It is very unusual. Yeah, what I also thought was sort of interesting is, you know, when you take a whole laptop, it's, it, you know, there's a lot of information in there. He is an attorney representing many clients, and perhaps there's information in there uh, covering other clients that sort of have gotten wrapped up in this search warrant. Um, Giuliani's lawyer released a statement, and it reads in part, quote, the electronics taken are also replete with the material covered by the attorney-client privilege and other constitutional privileges. How could attorney-client privilege play a role in this probe, and, and what type of potential charges should Giuliani's legal team be preparing for? Yeah, so on, on the privilege, expect to see a big fight from, uh, from Rudy Giuliani's lawyers about the attorney-client privilege, mm -hmm. because it is true uh, that a lawyer is likely to have information that is confidential with respect to clients. But not all communications between a lawyer and someone are privileged. It has to be a communication, uh, a document that relates to a communication uh, between a lawyer and a client that comes under the rubric of the lawyer's representation of the client um, and is and is confidential. So there's going to be a big fight about what Rudy, whether what Rudy uh, Giuliani was doing with respect to Ukraine was in furtherance of a lawyer-client relationship or was it political activity? And also one of the things that, that we know the government is looking at is Giuliani's advocacy for the firing of the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. And what I expect is going to happen is there's going to be an argument that that was not something that he was representing uh, a client on, at least not a U.S. client, mm. uh, which gets to what the issue is here. Uh, we know that what the government's looking at is a potential violation of something called the Foreign Agents Registration Act. And that requires, it's a, it's a law that's been in existence for, for decades, but is rarely prosecuted. But it requires somebody who's mm -hmm. acting as an agent for a foreign entity uh, in certain mm -hmm. instances, particularly lobbying, to register with the U.S. government. And the argument is that that's what Rudy was doing, or the allegation maybe that's what Rudy was doing, and he didn't register. Yeah, you sort of differentiated a little bit between uh, whether he had a client and you sort of said something like, or at least not a, a, a U.S. client. I guess that would make all the difference if, if he could be representing a client uh, from another country. And does that attorney-client privilege protection apply if your client is not an American? Yes. So generally, the attorney-client privilege mm. applies if you know, if your client is a foreign or, or an American, and there are all these exemptions mm -hmm. to the for, Foreign Agents Registration Act, locked in, it's, it's abbreviated FARA, so you'll sometimes hear it referred to as that. Lots of exemptions. It's been very hard for the Department of Justice to prosecute. But, uh, you know, the, the question is, when 
uh, Giuliani was advocating for the removal of the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. Who was he doing that on behalf of, and in, in, in what context was he doing it? You know, was he doing it on behalf of the president? That wouldn't make any sense. Uh, was he doing it as a lawyer? Well, that's a big question. And then if he was doing it purportedly as a lawyer, who was he doing it on behalf of? There are going to be lots of issues tied up in, in, in this. And, and remember, a search warrant uh, of a lawyer's office, and particularly this lawyer, needed approval of the highest uh, uh, echelons of the Department of Justice and a federal judge. So if I were if I were Rudy or his lawyer, I'd be very concerned about this. So uh, Rudy Giuliani was not the only um, attorney served with a search warrant. There was another one, uh, another search warrant that was served yesterday on Victoria Tenzing, an attorney and Republican operative who has worked with Giuliani. We should note that a spokesperson for Tenzing says that she was informed that she's not a target in this probe. But what does this development uh, on the very same day as Giuliani raid, what does it signal to you about the prosecution in its case? Well, again, to, to get approval uh, for a search of a lawyer's office actually, you know, requires further hurdles than in other cases. But, you know, here, regardless, uh, this was approved at the highest echelons of the Department of Justice, was approved by a judge. And, uh, you know, Tensing also had, you know, connections to, uh, to Ukrainians. And so it could be related to uh, that. It could also potentially be related to communications with Giuliani or with the president. I, I, I think it's early to read too much into that other than it is a significant development in, in this investigation uh, of Giuliani in particular. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, Ross Garber, thank you so much. Sure thing.